Now we are learning uh, Parshat Vayera. It begins as uh, Abraham is recovering from his circumcision. Abraham circumcised himself. At the end of last week's Torah portion, not always are the uh, <clears throat> what the, the order the things are written in the Torah uh, the the chronological order. Not always. Sometimes one thing can be written before, and really it happened years afterwards. <clears throat> God has his reasons why he did it that way, but that's how he did it. <clears throat> but here is <clears throat> sort of an exception. <clears throat> The uh, it, it occurs in exactly the order. Things occurred in exactly the order uh, that they were. And generally speaking, in the book of Bereshit, that's the way things are in the book of Genesis. So here we have the story that Abraham circumcised himself, and he's sitting in his tent, the opening of his tent, and there come angels, <clears throat> and they come to visit him, come to visit him. Now, shortly thereafter, if you remember last week's Torah portion, we learned about Lot, that Lot was Abraham's, what do we call it, his nephew, the son of Abraham's uncle, and uh, Haran, <coughs> sorry, the son of Abraham's brother, son of Abraham's brother, Haran, and Haran uh, died early, his son was called Lot, and his, his son was not a good man. His son got into all sorts of trouble, and his son decided to live in the city of Sdom. Sdom. Sdom was filled with evil people, and that made Lot feel very good because he could feel like he was a big righteous person because he didn't participate in all the, the evil, sadistic things that they did. <clears throat> but now the tides have turned, and God has decided enough with Sodom. Sodom has and done evil, and now God decides he's going to destroy Sodom. And so God says, I'm going to go down, and I'm going to see what's, according to the yells, the screams that are there, uh, am I going to I'll react, according to the scream. So that's what God says, I will go down, and I will see <clears throat> what's going on, and according to what is, uh, what I see down there, is that's what I'm going to do. Of course, the obvious question is, what are we talking about here? We're talking about the God of the Jews. The God of the Jews creates everything all the time. And he knows what's going on, every single detail. He knows what's happening. And he cares about what's happening. And he directs what's happening. To a certain degree, how that works with free will is that's a, that's a, that's a, that's a subject that we'll talk about later. But <clears throat> nevertheless, there it is. God says, I'm going to go down and I will see what is going on there in the city of Sodom. Um, <clears throat> it says the people are screaming, especially one people that were torturing people there. They were terrible, but new guests would come in. New guests would come into the city. Everybody would treat them very nice and, and, and this. And like everybody would give them uh, coins to go to buy in the store, and the store wouldn't honor any of the coins. The person would die from, <clears throat> from hunger, from thirst. <clears throat> okay. So God says, Erda now, I'm going to go down and I'm going to see akata, if it is like the screams that are coming out. Then I will go down and I will destroy the whole place. Okay, so this the, this sentence says, ha is her cries, the cries of the city. That's feminine. And called also haba'a, that's coming. That's feminine, it's coming up to me. The screams and the cries of the oppressed that are coming into the city. It says they used to put people, about the, if they had a tall person, they would put him into a, give him a, a room, with a short bed, and then they would come and cut off his legs. If it was a, if it was a short person, they would bring him with a long bed, and they would stretch him. They were they were terrible, terribly sadistic people, and they had weird, weird, uh, you know, just tremendously sadistic sense of humor. 
I mean, the fact is you found this by the Germans in, in World War II, also by the, the, um, the, um, <clears throat> the Japanese also, they had like room 503 or something, some crazy thing where they would do this just unheard of <clears throat> tortures on people and, and tests. And anyway, so this, this nature is found in people. It's nothing unusual. And God said, and then he said, oh boy, it's the city of Sodom is too much. Now, it wasn't really a city. The fact is it was five cities, Sodom and, and Amora. Somehow or other it became called Sodom and Gomorrah. In, in in English, but in the I don't know where they got that from, but in the Torah it says Sodom <coughs> and Amora. <coughs> so it says it was a like a, a a cluster of five cities, and they were all evil, all of them evil. So God says, I'm gonna go down and I'm gonna see what's happening over there in the city. Because okay, this doesn't make any sense at all. And God just destroyed the city. What's the problem? Right? He said, No. I'm going to go down and I'm going to see. What does he have to see? Was it he didn't know what was going on? <coughs> <clears throat> I mean, even got, even nowadays they have you know uh, what is it the um, uh, surveillance cameras. You can you can sit in your room and you can see what's going on in another place. And for sure, by God, I mean we're talking about reality over here. We're not talking about some sort of a comic book. This is reality that God really creates everything all the time. That's the God of the Jews. God creates everything. Everything all the time, he creates time itself. He creates one second, just turn, turn off the air conditioner. And so, God certainly knows what's going on with all of his creations. And so, what does he have to go down and he has to see? And the screams are coming up, and then he comes down and he would. <clears throat> But then it says, Osu, what, what they do, they do, this is feminine or masculine. This is like sort of neuter, Osu, if they do. Begam <clears throat> and we also have to understand, Ma er done now. What does it mean? God says, I will go down and see the screams that are coming up. <clears throat> I will go down and I will see. Hello, Hashemayim. Hashem looks down from the heavens. Hashem looks down from the heavens and he sees everything. So even if you want to say, okay, the, the God hid himself from the world, right? God hid himself from the world. We don't see God. You see you're being created. You feel you're being created. You see your next door neighbor being created. You see the, the sky and the trees and things. You see them being created constantly all the time. You don't see that. So maybe we can say that the same way we don't see God, maybe he doesn't see us. So we say, no, no, of course not. God looks down from his concealed place wherever that concealed place is. I mean, how exactly he conceals himself because he's everywhere. But nevertheless, it says that, so God conceals, the place where he's concealed is called heaven, right? We don't see heaven. After a person dies, he sees heaven. But where does it go? Where does a person go when he dies? He's still here. The person's still here. It's just revealed to him what there is here, right? The spiritual side of here. <clears throat> so when a person dies, it's also something like, God, you know, we don't see the person afterwards, but the person sees everything. So if a person is that way, a person is only a creation, <clears throat> a person can see everything, how much more so God can see everything. So what does it mean? God says, I'm going to go down and I'm going to see if their cries are this, and then I'm going to react. Is it like it's screams, the screams that are coming up from the city, the, the tortured people. This is a cry which goes which from the aspect of severity. Now this is going to be a little bit Kabbalistic here, but we'll explain this in, as, as well as we can. This is Chassidut. This is the Malchut of Hashem, the kingship of Hashem, the creative force <clears> of <throat> Hashem that actually creates the world. World in the Torah, it's called God's speech. God spoke. In Kabbalah, it's called God's malchut, His kingship. According to Kabbalah, <clears throat> it's very important to understand that God is a personality. Without this, you get into idolatry. Without what? What does idolatry come from? That you think God is so far away that you can't approach Him directly. You have to have something in the middle. <clears throat> well, the fact of the matter is, is that's not so. That's not so. 
I mean, it's true, you have to have people to teach you, and you have to have inspiration, and you have to have this. But on the other hand, God is infinitely close to everybody. He creates everybody. Okay, there's different aspects how God creates everybody. Right? It's a bit different with the, it says the, the Jew has an extra soul, and the, which is not so, that's different how the, the holy temple was different from the Eiffel Tower. Right? It, it, there's different aspects of revelation of God. But nevertheless, God is created. If there's nothing except for God, God is everywhere. And so how does it that God interacts with the world? So on that, it's a big mystery. And it says that's the mystery of God's personality. <clears throat> that's the mystery of what it says that man is created in the image of God. That God, and one of the meanings of that is, is that human personality can be broken down into 10 facets. And so also God has a personality. And God's personality also can be broken down into 10 facets. That's the secret of faith. It's called the secret of of the 10 spherot is the secret of faith. Because then you come to connect and you realize that God is connecting to you. And you can also utilize your personality to connect to God's personality. Now, this is not the essence of God. This is just God's personality. How he does this is, a, a, is another secret. These all, this, all these whole things, everything dealing with God is basically a secret. On the other hand, it's not a secret at all. Here's the world. It's something like the world is being created by God all the time. That's not a big secret. Here's the world. Look at look outside. You see the world, the sky, the sky. The, you know, it doesn't create itself. So you you know you can make up some sort of a philosophy or something to say it does. <clears throat> but on the other hand, you can also equally and oppositely make up a philosophy that it doesn't. That God is creating it all. The only problem is with the latter philosophy, and saying that God is created, may creating it. Well, maybe we're obligated to God. Maybe God has demands from us. Maybe we're not God. Uh, if you say that God is creating everything, that means that maybe there's a law here. Maybe there is right and wrong. Maybe you can't do what you want, say what you want, think what you want. It's a lot easier just to say that everything came from evolution. And that just sort of popped up and it keeps popping up all the time. Could be. Could be. You can say it like that. But in order to connect to God, you have to have faith. Without faith, you're never going to connect. You can't connect to God. God is above understanding. The whole idea that God is creating us makes absolutely no sense. You can't prove it, it mathematically, intellectually, <coughs> scientifically. Right? Look through a microscope, you can't see God. No matter how small it gets, look through a telescope, you can't see God. So God can only really be perceived by faith. Emuna, it's called emuna. That's, that's really the aspect of God's chachma and our chachma. That's the highest of the ten spherot. And the lowest of the ten spherot, <clears throat> that's called din. That's called God's kingship or God's severity. Dina de malchuta dina. That goes from below to above, like fire. Rakshi dina rafia. This is what's called a lenient judgment, lenient severity. Melech bamishpat yamud It says that God through his severity, he creates the world. Is it like it's screams? The screams that come up from Sodom, which come up. The world is always coming up to God. Like it says, going up. Rachel, she is coming, arriving. She, it's feminine, from below to above. Okay, let's explain this. What's going on? <clears throat> now we're going to understand something about God and the world, how God interacts with the world. And like I said before, idolatry comes from thinking that God is not intimately involved. He needs somebody else or something else. He needs a power, a ghost, a person or something in order to create the world, <clears throat> in order to be active in the world, uh, he, in order to answer prayers. God needs somebody in the middle. <clears throat> now it's okay to ask somebody to pray for you you can ask somebody to pray the more people that pray the better and there are some people that are more devoted to the creator and their prayers are more effective right we see that with Moses the people went to Moses when the they, the, the, it says the water was bitter they didn't know what they went to Moses when the snakes were coming and biting everybody they went to Moses Moses pray for us help us when the Jews sinned with the golden calf Moses prayed Right, but you're, everyone is praying to 
the creator. You can request people for help. And you can even request departed people for help with the, with the aid of the, the tzaddikim. But you can pray only to God. And God is infinitely close to us. The, there are some people that they put them, make themselves closer to God than others because of humility. They're willing to admit and to live according to God's principles, not according to theirs. So here we go. <clears throat> so the, let's understand what, what is God. How is, how, it is it, how is it exactly that God <clears throat> creates the whole world and he cares about what we do, but nevertheless, he's totally infinite and he existed before the world. His existence is nothing like any of our existence. In a way, we can say God doesn't really exist in any way that we understand it. God creates all existence. It's infinitely, infinitely more real than anything we can possibly imagine. And he's infinitely further from us than even the spiritual. On the other hand, he's infinitely closer to us than we are to ourselves. He's creating us. How is this? What, what, what goes on? Let's understand. Here we go. The Rebbe is explaining. And from this thing of Sodom and Amorah, we're going to understand the very deep idea about what God is and who exactly we're praying to and why we should pray only to God. Obirin, <clears throat> to explain this, Hine, God of the Jews. <clears throat> this God of the Jews is going to be the God of all mankind. It's the only God. God he's the God that's creating everybody. No other religion has worships a God that creates everybody and listens to all prayers and gave them the personal, <coughs> what, is, what, do we, what do he wants? Like this, but in the beginning, we have we have to begin what it says, but Chazal, what it says by the rabbis, Omar It is revealed and known before he who spoke and created the world. What does it mean? Everything in the world is Galui Vedua. It is revealed and known. Because behold, the philosophim, the philosophers. And there was intellectuals, even religious intellectuals. Nilu, they are not able to understand. Inyan, hashkacha pratis. They are not able to understand what is this idea of hashkacha pratit. <clears throat> A very important term you're going to learn today. Hashkacha pratit. Simple meaning. Simple meaning of the two words. Pratit means individual. Individual. Details. Pratim. Hashgacha means that God observes. Mashkiach. It's a little bit more than that. Just observing. It's also directing. Mashkiach means God directs. God directs and he observes pratit every detail in the universe. Now there's many more details in the universe than, than we have any idea of. <clears throat> First of all, <clears throat> There's the plan. It's just look in the, the astronomer, astronomers, astronomy, right? They're always revealing new galaxies and new <clears throat> whatever the solar systems. Who knows what they have got over there? <clears throat> new nebulae. They get better and better <clears throat> equipment so they can start revealing these things which are you know out of further out than what they revealed previously. <clears throat> and new, new, new sort of uh, whatever it is, uh, stars and quarks, who knows what they are. Anyway, they're revealing billions and billions of new things all the time, astronomers. Astronomers. They're seeing new things, trying to explain new things. That's just in the physical world. Uh, stars on the spirit. What about the spirit? You know how many angels there are? It says there's an infinite number of angels, and each angel is different from every other angel. And there's camps of angels <clears throat> general levels of angels, and there's details, and there's sub-details, and sub-sub-sub-sub-details. Those are just the angels. Then there's the worlds of the souls. Infinite numbers of souls are different. <clears throat> and they're more than the atoms there are in the world. And God observes and directs every single detail. But let's just deal with our personal lives. Everything that happens to us, everything that is, everything that exists. And you might say, okay, the world, let the world do whatever it was. It goes according to laws. But people have free will. How does God have 
individual direct observation and, and control to a certain degree of everything that happens. I mean, really, when you say so to a certain degree, we'll reveal that it was, I mean, one of the things that God creates is free will. So the free will is an actual creation of God, and it has to be free. If it's not free, then it's not really what God wanted. So a person has free will within certain, like this is a big mystery, of course, but nevertheless, God directs everything that happens in the world. And he certainly is aware of everything that's already happened in the world. That's what's called hashgacha pratit. In a way, there's no bigger revelation of God than that. Everything that happens is being directed by God. <clears throat> it's right in front of us, and we don't see anything. <clears throat> a person cannot stick up his finger from below. Unless he gets power to do so from above. Like I say, yeah, we have free will, it's true, but it's the very, where do the ideas pop into our minds from? Where do we get ideas from? All of these ideas pop into our, our minds, right? Some sort of a dictator, Genghis Khan or something like that. Where did he get his um, power of leadership and his ideas to just sweep through wherever he swept through and kill everybody? Where, where did he get that from? Right, that idea did not come from himself. That idea somehow or other came from God or it came from the devil and the devil comes from God. It comes from the power of destruction. Uh, it's very complicated. In the end, he has to make the decision what to do. That's the human part. But uh, but what to do, the ideas, they all come into his mind. Everything comes from above. And then when he decides what he's going to do, who gives him the power to do it? Right? All of a sudden, he decides, I'm going to sweep through Europe. Ow, ow, he gets an ingrown toenail. Ah, I can't sweep through Europe and just and crack on the world. I got this terrible ingrown, terrible toothache. It's driving me crazy. Right. Who's keeping him healthy? Who's giving his muscles the power to move and his, his nervous system the power to it? Uh, God is doing the whole thing. Now, this is a very big mystery. This is a, 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 a mystery because we're, <laughs> we got to analyze the thing to the point where we're nothing. But it's not so, we're definitely something. And we're making choices and God wants us to make choices. But the fact of the matter is how grateful and thankful we should be that everything in our body works. We take everything for granted. Right? Take everything for granted. <clears throat> that you don't stub your toe and that you don't miss your bus and that you don't, uh, people go blind all of a sudden, they go deaf suddenly. That we take our eyes for granted. We take our ears for granted. We take our children for granted. We think we're the boss. Right? There's this big movement in the world now that we're, I'm going to decide. I'm going to decide if I'm a man. I'll decide, if I'm, I'll decide if I'm a woman. I'll decide if I'm a cat, a dog. I'll decide if I'm, well, I'll decide everything. It's all my decision. Right? I'm going to decide everything. Well, you know, it works for a while. It does. It works for a while. People fool themselves, but it doesn't last for long. You know, Elian Kane Machrizim love me Lomaila. Unless so nothing happens in the world, unless it's uh, it's announced from uh, from him from above. And the Kaya Laem, the the philosophers, the people who use their minds too much, right? They don't want to use faith at all. So they can't admit there's something above understanding. They can't understand. They say, listen, we believe in God, and we believe that God exists, and we believe that God is one, <clears throat> and true, is the true oneness. And if so, he's infinitely above any divisions. How can God possibly know all these details? And how can God individually <clears throat> Pay attention to every detail in the world. Dato to put his mind on so many multitude of things. I mean, there's, I, I don't know if it's possible to count. Uh, you can't do uh, the quadrillion, sextillion. There's no number you could possibly get to, right? A ten to the, to the tr trillionth power. I don't know. <clears throat> How many there are in the spiritual? For sure, you can't count. How can God possibly put, they can't understand this, but let's take the spiritual out. Let's just take the physical world, right? Every single ant, every single bug. I read somewhere, National Geographic, that there's one area in South Africa that they, they found like 20,000 beetles, different types, different types of beetles, not just bugs, different types. I hope they got the number right, 20,000, maybe it's 2,000. Different types of beetles. In this one little area, 
and, and there's billions. Who knows how many beetles there are in the world? How each one is different. Each one is different for if for no other reason that they're in different places. And God pays attention to all of them. He gives food to all of them. Come on, just say God made laws of nature, and they just you know kick the world off and let the world go according to the laws. No, no, we say that God every single thing. That's what <laughs> that's what Rishka Chaprati says. What do you need it for? Who needs this? Thing? But that's the truth. That it's the truth. It's a fact. <laughs> It's a lot easier if it wasn't a fact, maybe, right? It's a lot easier if it wasn't a fact. It's just like the, the calculations that you make. If you say that the <clears throat> earth goes around the sun, then the calculations are much easier to make. But the fact is, is that the sun goes around the earth. That's the fact. <laughs> it goes around the earth, right? I, it's not so easy to understand. And when you look up at the sky, it doesn't, you can see that it doesn't work that way, right? <clears throat> but nevertheless, that's what it is. And that's how the, 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 the wise men of the Talmud how they figured out, you know, the, the months and exactly, they made these amazing calculations and they always came out exactly right. They made calculations up to this very day. So just because something is easy doesn't necessarily mean that it's right. <clears throat> so it's easy to say that God just sits up in the heavens and he has maybe a bunch of angels or people or something like that and they take care of the world. But the fact is not so, that God really has Hashkacha Prati. He personally takes care of everything. He does it through angels too. There's angels and things like that. But it's still the angels are also creations of God. That's also that just makes the situation worse. <laughs> God has to has to observe all these angels as well. More creations. The Chazal Kivnu Lateris. The rabbis say like this. The rabbis they want to answer in one answer. Everything is revealed and known before God. She ain't so that the knowledge, the awareness, the consciousness, if you want to call it, of God is not kadimi on anything similar to the awareness of man. Not like anything like a person knows something. Shedato, he see the davar. If I know something, right? I look in my, my front yard, there's a tree. I see there's a tree in my front yard, and it's a it's a palm tree, palm tree in my front yard, and so I know the thing. Mitachila, but before I looked out the window or before it was planted, lo yadu, I didn't know. Because shiadeya, when I know the thing, haridato malubash, but the idea, then my mind is in this knowledge. Umachshavazu and this thought, shenote dato la siga that I put my mind to understand it. The kodim yediaso, and before I knew it, hayadatu panui, my mind was empty. Bariza bechinashino, it's a change, bis palus, and and an effect. <clears throat> right? What? How does a person know something? Right? I say, well, I wish I had a palm tree in my front yard. Someone says, but you got a palm tree in your front yard. I say, really? Are you, are you kidding? I'm, I'm almost sure I don't. Come look and see. I say, wow, you're right. I had a palm tree. I didn't know that. Look at this. It was hidden among the other trees. I didn't know it was there, right? So now there was something I did not know. And there was a time I didn't know it. And now there's a time when suddenly I do know it. And here it is. And that, that I know it, the palm tree is something separate from me. And that causes an effect in my mind that I know that there's a palm tree, right? That's that's pretty obvious, obvious. That's knowledge. It says Nasha Inkin, which is not the case by God. Yediya, so the knowledge of God she <clears throat> <clears throat> <clears throat> that he knows call all the most all the worlds what prate and all the details ena inyan shadato mitlabesha that the fact that god's knowledge and his awareness and his consciousness in is clothed benitfeset and is grasped beze in this thing it's not that god somehow or other is occupied by the knowledge that he knows about the world. It's like something which is known, revealed and known. Everything is just revealed and known. It's not that God knows things. Everything is just known automatically. automatically. It doesn't have to be, God doesn't have to make an effort and direct his attention to something. Lay that to know. If so, we're going to have to ask the question: What's what was Sodom and Gomorrah? God says, "I'm going to I'm going to come down and I'm going to understand." We're, let me see. We're, 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 we'll get to that. 
that which God enlivens and creates everything. That God does not <coughs> clothe himself in that thing. Right? God keeps me alive, keeps you alive, keeps all those bugs in South Africa, America, keeps them all alive. <coughs> How does he do it? It's not individual. He doesn't in, invest himself or enclose himself or concentrate on one thing. But it's what's called God surrounds all the worlds. God's very existence brings these things into existence and keeps them in existence. What does it mean that God spoke? We'll see. How much more so? If God creates everything and God enlivens everything, so for sure God knows everything. And he knows it in an automatic way, just like he enlivens it. It doesn't have to be that God clothes himself or concentrates himself but Tefisa and is grabbed in that thing. Cooling. <clears throat> Me, when I'm thinking about that palm tree, I can't think about anything else, right? If someone says to me, you do have a palm tree, look at this, all of a sudden, someone says, uh, calls me up on the phone, right? And says, would you be interested in, uh, in I'm, I'm making a bar mitzvah tonight? I say, listen, I, I don't have to, I want to go out and see something. Just one moment, right? If the palm tree is really, really important to me, then I can only concentrate on one thing at a time. How can it be that Hashem concentrates on billions of things at a time? So the answer is he doesn't concentrate at all. Everything is automatic. What does that mean? We'll see. Cave and sin, shehu galoi biyadua, since everything is revealed and known to God, is ain't shy achlal kushyotam, is not re relevant their question. Shehu bechin is reboy, that God, if so, he is dividing himself. Kizeh ain't orak bamini yadia, sadan, only with a person. Can he concentrate on one thing and be occupied in one thing? And when he's doing that, he can't be occupied in something else. There are some people that are multitaskers. They can do a few things at a time. How many can they do at a time? Two things, three things at a time. Right? That's it. Shem does billions, trillions, quadrillions, infinite, 10 to the quadrillionth power. <clears throat> How does he do it? <clears throat> so the answer is, is that we're talking about God, and God, in a way, he doesn't do it. It's just everything is done. She'ev shalom, it is impossible for, <clears throat> it's not like a person. A person is impossible to know something unless he invests his knowledge into it. In machshavto, mitzlabesha has to be put into this, make an effort. That's what it says by God. My thoughts are not like your thoughts. Everything is known and revealed. Okay, let, let's, let's not get too impersonal over here. The fact is God answers prayers. That's the fact. The fact is God cares. He cares about the world. Let's not get <clears throat> make God into one of these Eastern religion things where God is just like up there and he's just, you know, surveying everything. But nevertheless, that definitely is, yes, an aspect of God. And not only does God survey everything automatically, but also he enlivens everything constantly and he creates everything constantly. He gives everything its soul and its body. What we're saying, that without God, there's no existence. There, there's no existence. God creates all, all existence. Why did he do such a thing like that? The reason that he does it really is in order that the Jews should do what it says in the Torah. That's why he does it. That's why everybody's alive. We'll talk about that in, in, later on. But that's, let's just talk about what God is that we're, re, that we're praying to and that we're worshiping, what the Jews are trying to inform the world what God is. <clears throat> Everything is glue if you do it. <clears throat> it says a person will understand this, that not everybody can really grasp this idea. This, this idea, because you have to really divest yourself, remove yourself of any sort of ideas of what you think existence is, right? All these big philosophers and all, they just freak out about this. What is existence, right? What is being? Does it exist? Is it all 
there's this big movements now, America and all these places, right? Everything is subjective. Everything is in your mind. Doesn't matter. Probably the most stupid. I, I mean, I can't really believe. I think Scientology and things are, are based on this stupid, egotistical, ridiculous thing. I mean, everything goes from your mind. Where does your mind come from? Where, where does your mind come from? Okay, everything comes from my mind. Right? Where, where does my mind come from? Where does it come? Just, it's just, I created myself. That's what Paro said. I created myself. Okay. The fact is not. The fact is there's God. God creates everything. And he creates everything in a way that you can make big, big, super mistakes. And not only that, he made everything in a way where it's almost impossible not to make mistakes. Because the fact that he concealed himself <clears throat> means that we feel that we're real and we can't even imagine how can it be that God really directs everything. That's Jewish faith. He may, but Mashiach is going to bring everybody to, to, to at least be aware of this. <clears throat> what God really is. And therefore, all, all the, people will drop all their idolatry. Hine Kasiv, it says, Shiva, Ela, and Hashem, Hema, Mishotatim, Bekala, Oretz, they are, this is in Divra Yomim. This is in the Chronicles, the Book of Chronicles. Book of Chronicles, he says, these are the eyes of God that are looking through the whole world. Mishotatim, they are, the eyes of God, it says, are, are what does it say, the, the Scouring, scouring, not the word. Anyway, they're observing the whole entire world. Right? They're observing the world. And then there's another place that says, the eyes of God, Mishotatot, they are observing the world, but this is masculine and this is feminine. God has masculine eyes and feminine eyes. What does that mean? Yesh Lavi, and we have to understand. With this, we're also going to understand something, why God is always referred to as masculine. We will see. But Yesh Lavi, and we have to understand... <coughs> The Indian Mishotatim or What does it mean? The God's eyes, they, they uh, say they they cover. They Mishotatim means they they go back and forth. The over the whole world. One time it says Mishotatim, masculine. One time it says feminine. Mashva. This is implied. Shenimshach lirot that God somehow or other is drawn down to see, ul ayen and to concentrate. Hadavar in some things, Ali de Riazu, and by means of the seeing, Hari Ze Kamo, the Genesis Labshus Badab, it's like God clothes himself. Hey, this is the exact opposite of what we says. It says that God's eyes, <clears throat> that they <clears throat> scour the world. That's the word scour? The world. That, that's an, yeah, an English word. <clears throat> they observe the whole world. Hanira Viadua, Vizel Hiora Hepikma Mashkatu, Livne Gilivi Yadua. Hey, it says that everything is just automatically revealed by God. And here it says that God has to go and scout out the world. He's going around and he's looking, feminine uh, scouting and masculine scouting. What's going on? <clears throat> we just finished saying that God is not involved and God does not clothe himself or concentrate himself anywhere. And here we say that God does. It says that God's eyes are scouring the world. They're looking... The Indian is Kenoda Shabbat Spheros. Now we have ten Spherot. Yesh Orot Vakalim. There's what's called lights and vessels. God has this personality, and the personality is also very complex. There's what's called lights and vessels. Like a person, a person has a body and a soul, a soul and a body. Orot Vakalim. Orot, the lights, that's like the soul. Vakalim are the vessels. Because the aspect of God, which is God's kindness, his love, and his awe, and his power, this is just a vessel. of Or, but the light, which is inside of all these vessels, this is the godliness inside of God's personality. This is godliness himself, and this is love. He's not, God is not the ten, the ten spheres. The ten spherot, the ten aspects of God, that are aspects of God. But in God <clears throat> is, in the, in these aspects of God, there's God himself. Like a person, right? A person, a person uh, uses his hand to write something. So he writes something. So it's, it's his hand is writing. <clears throat> and also he could be writing words of love. But inside of this hand that's writing is the love. And inside of the love is the person. The same thing with God. God is controlling the world, 
creating the world, enlivening the world. But that, so to speak, is only the outside part of, aspect of God. There's also the inside. That's what's called the light. This light is put into the vessel. The vessel is God's love, God's awe, God's power, and the other, and the other attributes of God. Shame Nikurim Bechinis Kaling. These are the vessels. Shame Magbilim at the or. They, so to speak, limit God. Right? We see God sometimes is very kind. Some we read in the Torah, God just destroyed this week's Torah portion. He destroyed Sodom and Amor. He sent a flood, right? Last week, two weeks ago, in the time of Noah. Ubahem Bal Yadam, and by means of these vessels of godliness, Nim or can be drawn godliness itself to be Mechaya that it enlivens all of the creations, Liotitavut, to be creation of, for instance, Michael, the angel Michael, the angel Gabriel, that's Chesed and Gevura. Then there's the camp of Michael, the camp, all the sub angels under the angel Michael. They receive from God's kindness and love. Gabriel, they receive from God's power, severity. It's impossible to be just from the light of God itself, but there has to be vessels. Just like it's impossible for a person to have <coughs> money, silver, and gold from the soul. A person's soul, you can sit in your house and just think about money, it doesn't work unless it has to be put into a body. The soul is put into a body. And then someone can give you charity or you can give someone charity by means of the physical hand. Come okay, and similarly with God. We're created in God's image. So God is one. And the lights of, light of God is <clears throat> everywhere and sees everything automatically. But there's the vessels of God, of the, the what's called the ten spheros, the ten aspects of God. This is also ha'alat ha'zachut. This pays attention. To the merits and the, uh, the, 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 the the obligations, the, the the blemishes of each and every creation. Ki al sha'adam over avero. When a person does a sin, so now he creates a bad angel. And this makes a blemish and a stain in that angel. Hamamunallah al So this is all God's vessels. Kiesh Malachim, there are certain angels that they receive from one aspect, <clears throat> namely from severity, and there's others that receive from other aspects, namely kindness. That's the idea of the angel Machoel and Gabriel. So the system is very, very complicated. Like we said, God is one, God sees everything automatically, but God has a system. And just like a human being has a whole system that, let's say, he wants to pick up a, a pencil. So in order to pick up a pencil, it has to it takes a whole tremendous complicated <clears throat> working in order to do it. The, the soul puts the idea into the brain. The brain puts the idea into the nerves. The nerves pull the muscles. The muscles pull the bones. The bones they, 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 they make the, 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 the hand what react. Then there's the nerves at the end, the fingers that they feel. So you know what you're doing. And that coordinates with your eyes that you see what's going tremendously complicated. The same thing is, but it's still the one person doing it. Right, still someone doing it. If a person steals, a person can say, "No, it was just my fingers that did it. It was just my nerves that did it. My bones, my muscles." They'll say, "We'll take you and your muscles." Then we'll take. You know what? We'll take your bones and your muscles and your skin and your flesh and your limbs, and we'll put them into prison. You can stay outside. You can. You don't have to go to prison. We're just putting your bones and your whole body and everything that did this. The person is connected to his body. What are you going to do? The same thing here, so to speak, is with God, that God is the, the essence, but also God has vessels and lights, and he's connected to these. And therefore, the, some in one way, these, these express themselves are through the different angels. There's some angels which are for good, some angels which are for bad, etc. That's the idea of the vessels of the 10 aspects of Malchut Atzilut, and this is what we're going to talk about God willing tomorrow. We're going to continue it tomorrow. A bit complicated, but on the other hand, it's a new, more detailed and intimate understanding of how God is not comprehensible, impossible. But on the other hand, that God is very present and he's creating the world 
and it's no contradiction one to the other. We'll learn more tomorrow, God willing. Now let's learn the Bar Malchut. <laughs>